It is November 1st, 2013 on a Friday, 12.46 a.m. Pacific Time, and this is Early Morning Pink. How to Help Protect Yourself from Fukushima Radiation by Washington's blog, dated October 31st, 2013. The good news is that antioxidants can help counter the free radicals and protect us from low-level radiation, and antioxidants can be obtained free or at low cost. Don't buy lead underwear. A Japanese company is literally selling anti-radiation underwear. But there are more down-to-earth ways to protect yourself from Fukushima radiation. Step 1. Reduce exposure. How do we protect ourselves from radiation? Initially, we should reduce our exposure to radiation in the first place. For example, world-renowned phys- physicist Michio Kaku told his Japanese family and friends months ago that they should leave if they can. If you live in an area receiving any radiation exposure, you should also take off your shoes and leave them by the door, Asian style, and use a HEPA vacuum to get rid of excess dust. Okay. Radiation in is concentrated in milk. Therefore, when high doses of radiation are being released into the air, we might want to avoid milk altogether for a couple of weeks or so. Radioactive iodine concentrates in milk, but it has a half-life of only eight days. So avoid milk for a couple of weeks should help keep you safe. Also, rain is the main way that radiation is spread outside of the vicinity of the nuclear accident. As a parent who doesn't want to tell my kids they can't play in the rain, none of this is fun to talk about. But during periods of extremely high airborne radiation releases, people might want to keep their kids out of heavy rain. So if you've got kids, folks, don't let them stay out in the rain if you're in the path of radiation from Fukushima. We should also be moderate with our consumption of fish caught off the west coast of the US and Canada. See this, this, and this in the video below. This, this, and this. Nuclear expert Arne Gunderson explains how to reduce exposure in case of a worst case scenario. And some of you may not want to eat fish at all off the West Coast, U.S. and Canada, but that's totally your decision. In a worst case scenario, for example, if the fuel pool at Fukushima Reactor 4 were to topple over, I would close my windows, turn the air conditioner on, replace the filters frequently, damp mop, put a HEPA filter in the house, and try to avoid as much of the heart particles as possible. You are not going to walk out with a Geiger counter and be in a plume that is going to tell you the meter. The issue will be on the west coast, hot particles. And the solution there is HEPA filters and avoiding them. What to do if exposed to extremely high doses of radiation? Potassium iodide protects against damage from radioactive iodine, but should only be taken if one is directly exposed to high levels of radioactive iodine, and you should never exceed the recommended dosage. Other specific substances have been proven to protect against poisoning from exposure to other specific types of radiation. Prussian blue for cesium. DTPA for for plutonium, americium, and curium. Don't know if I said that correctly, folks. Apologize if I didn't. Sodium bicarbonate. In other words, baking soda for uranium. These are not candy and can have their own side effects. So only take if you are exposed to high levels of radiation. Get enough calcium, potassium, iron, and magnesium. It is vital to get enough calcium, potassium, iron, and magnesium. Why? 
Radioactive strontium is very similar chemically to calcium. Our bodies take up strontium and deposit it into our bones, treating it as if it were calcium. If we're not getting enough calcium, then our calcium-hungry bodies will more quickly and eagerly absorb strontium. On the other hand, if we're getting enough calcium, our bodies won't absorb as much strontium. Indeed, this is the exact same reason that potassium iodide works to protect against damage from radioactive iodine. By loading up on harmless iodine, our bodies are less eager to absorb the dangerous type of iodine. Similarly, radioactive cesium is treated like potassium by our bodies. The body absorbs, absorbs it, treats it like potassium, and deposits it into our muscles, heart, and other tissues. So getting enough potassium will help to prevent absorption of radioactive cesium. Plutonium is treated like iron by our bodies. So getting enough iron will help reduce absorption of plutonium. Magnesium has also been shown to provide some protection against radiation. And some alternate health writers sing its praises. Moreover, Magnesium is essential for absorption of calcium and potassium and helps to protect your heart and other body tissues. The dosage depends on a number of factors depending on your age, size, health condition, and the amount of radiation you're exposed to. See your healthcare professional for guidance. At the least, everyone should take a daily multivitamin to get some of these important minerals. It's up to you. What about low-level radiation? No matter what you may have been told, the widely accepted scientific, scientific consensus is that even low levels of radiation can harm health. One of the main reasons is that low-level ionizing radiation causes our cells to produce free radicals, which in turn damage our cells. Columbia University explains the damaging effects of low-level radiation through free radical creation. And this is an illustrative explanation of biological effects of ionizing radiation. All right, and you can read up on that if you wish. Indeed, some radiation ex experts agree that the creation of a lot of free radical creation is the most dangerous mechanism of low-level ionizing radiation. During exposure to low-level doses of ionizing radiation, the most of harmful effects are produced indirectly through radiolysis of water and formation of reactive oxygen species and so forth. You can read more on that. Scientists from the Institute of Nuclear Science claim in the Archive of Oncology chronic exposure to low-level radiation doses could be much more harmful than high short-term doses because of lipid peroxidation initiated by free radicals. All right, and you can read more on that. I'm going to have to skip some of this in the interest of time. Okay. The good news is that antioxidants can help counter the free radicals and protect us from low-level radiation, and antioxidants can be obtained free or at a low cost. And here are some links. That's why doctors recommend eating lots of fruit, fruit fresh fruit, and vegetables to help protect against radiation. This article originally appeared on Washington's blog, and it was brought to you by IntelliHub.com. Okay, good things to know. How do you protect yourself against Fukushima radiation? And that's going to do it for this report. This is a photo, by the way, Nuclear Emergency Tracking Center map. All right, and you can check out any of these links too, where it's in blue, blue letters, and it's underscored. You can check those out by clicking. That's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching and please stay safe and healthy.